Hello and welcome again to another video lecture number theory. So in this video, I want to talk about the definition of divisibility and all uh, the concepts that surround this definition. Um, so one of the things that we uh, saw already in, in the video lectures is that we talked about uh, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Those are the basic uh, operations in the integers but they lead to more complicated concepts like divisibility. Um, before I go again into the definition and talk about the specifics, I want to recall a couple of things. So first, let's recall that the integers are symbolized with this uh, letter here, and I just the number 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and so on. And also that divisibility is a statement about two integers. Now, that's going to be important because divisibility it's not a computation, it's not a number, it's just a statement. So as such, a statement is either true or false. Now, informally, what we're going to say is that an integer A divides another integer B if A goes exactly into B. Now, of course, that is not the formal definition of divisibility, but that's what usually maybe you think about in terms of informal definition. Now, let me give you a geometric idea of divisibility before we actually go into the actual definition of it. Now, this uh, geometric idea is going to work only for positive integers. So the geometric idea is going to go like this. So we're going to represent the number by squares like this. So the number 1 is going to be represented just by one square, the number 2 by two squares, and so on. Now, how are we going to We'll talk about this geometric idea first. Now, divisibility, as the name indicates, is like one number divides another. And you're going to see why the name is like that. So let's say, for example, this uh, statement that says 3 divides 12. Now, we, I guess we can all agree that this is, uh, this is a true statement, that 3 divides 12. Now, let's represent that uh, geometrically. Now, we can also say that 12 is divisible by 3. Those statements are, uh, they mean exactly the same thing. Now, what we're going to do geometrically is let, let's represent the number 3 as, as this configuration of squares. And we can see that the number 12 is going to be actually divided into chunks of the number 3. So if you think about that, let's add another number 3. Let's add another one. And let's add one more. So that whole uh, rectangle that you see there, that all is the number 12. And if you can, if I can point out this is the number 3, which is these three blocks that are here are dividing exactly the number 12. So that's sort of like the geometric representation of divisibility. The number 3 actually divides, in the actual sense, the other number into smaller pieces, smaller chunks. So we go say that 3 goes into 12 four times. Why? Because there are four chunks of the number 3 that go exactly into the number 12. Now let's look at some other example. We can also say that 5 divides 15. Yeah, That's a true statement. Or you can also say that 15 is divisible by 5. Both of them, of course, mean exactly the same. Now 5 is represented by 5 of these squares. And I... I'm going to make copies of the 5 until I get the, num the number 15. So I have to make two, three copies of it. So those three copies of 15 are going to give me the complete number 15. So as you can see again from the previous example, the number 5 divides the number 15 into three pieces. So we can say that 5 goes into 15. Which this should be a 15 here, not 13. 15, uh, three times. All right. So that was the example, the geometric idea, right? Now let's talk about the actual definition, the formal definition of divisibility. So we have two integers, a and b, and we're going to ask that the integer a is not equal to 0, and I'll get into that in a second. So we're going to say this. We're going to say that a divides b, which you're going to denote by, by this symbol, a, vertical line b, if and only if this happens. There is an integer k such that the number b is a multiple of a by that integer. 
So saying that A divides B is saying that B is a multiple of A, or you can obtain B by multiplying the number A by some other integer K. Now that will be the formal definition, and this will be the one we're gonna use uh, in some of the proofs we're gonna do during, during the course. Now, as I said, A divides B means just this, where K is an integer, and that's important. This K has to be an integer. Now, as again, as the notation is this one, it's also usually the vertical line. Uh, if you look at some other books, maybe they have a little bit of a different notation with a line that is a little bit diagonal. I would like to use this notation for, for this course. Now, let's see uh, some examples. So we can say that it is true that four divides 20. And why is that? Because the number 20 is a multiple of four. So if you look at the definition, then A will be the number four b will be the number 20 and k will be that integer that exists which makes that multiplication 5 times 4 equal to the original b that is uh, the number 20. now the same thing we can do with the other example we can say that the negative 3 divides 21 and that's because we can express 21 as a multiple of negative 3 and how do we do that so with 21 we can easily see that is negative 7 times negative 3. Now the a in this case will be the a, the negative 3. Uh, the b is in this case the 21 and the integer k that exists is the number negative 7. Now that doesn't mean that all the statements of course are going to be true. So there are some statements that are false. So for example uh, it is false that 5 divided by 12 because there is no integer k so that 12 is equal to k times 5. Now, in a similar way that we do with many other notations, uh, when something is false, we cross it out, and so that statement will become true. So if it is false that A divides B, we're going to use this notation to indicate that A does not divide B. So let's see an example. So it is true that 2 does not divide 3. Uh, so, of course, 2 doesn't divide 3, doesn't go exactly into the number 3. That's because there is no integer such that 3 is a multiple of 2. Now, and it's important, of course, that this k that is here has to be an integer for the divisibility to happen. Now, this doesn't happen. Why? Now, if you think about it, well, you can make k equals to 3 halves. And this equation right here will be true, but 3 halves is not an integer. So that's what is important, that this k here is an integer. So it's a is this number that is here should be a multiple of this one, but not any multiple, an integer multiple of it. All right, so let me make a little bit of a remark uh, from the definition. So let me recall again, what is the definition of divisibility? We say that A uh, not equal to zero and B are integers. So we can say that A divides B, denoted by this, if and only if, there is an integer K, so that this equality here happens. Now notice here that we ask this a here uh, not to be zero. Now that is actually not that crucial and, and before you think about divisibility but uh, dividing by zero is not the same thing. So that condition here if you for example allowed that a here to be zero that's not going to give you any contradictions in the definition. Now, let me make this very clear. I am not saying that you can divide by zero. I am just saying that in the definition of divisibility, you can allow the number A here to be zero. And that's not gonna introduce any contradictions with the axioms of the natural numbers or the integers. Now, the reason that is not a contradiction is because, again, let me say that, again, I'm not saying that we can divide by zero. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that in this definition, you can allow A to be zero. Why is that? Let me, let me elaborate a little bit more on that. So if we allowed A to be zero in the definition of divisibility, then what will we will have? So we will have that uh, zero divides B, and when will that happen? That will happen when B is a multiple of zero for some integer K. Now, if you look at this equation here, uh, this equality, that is an entirely possible thing to have. You can have 
an integer equals to k times 0. Now, the question here is that that only happens when b is equal to 0. So if, if in the definition of divisibility you allowed your a to be 0, yeah, that's fine. That doesn't introduce any contradictions. But the only thing that could happen is that the b is equal to 0. So that is, of course, is not very interesting. Um, again, let me emphasize that again. I'm not saying that you can divide by 0. I'm just saying that if in the definition you allowed your a to be 0, there is no contradiction. But it's not very interesting to have that case. It's what we call a trivial case. So because the only way that 0 divides another number is if the other number is 0, then that's not very interesting. So we're not, we're not going to allow that trivial case to happen. So from now on, what we're going to say is we're going to stick to this definition, a not equal to 0, with the same conditions that I described earlier, not because it's going to introduce some contradiction. The reason for this condition here is just because if we allowed a to be 0, then it's just a, a trivial uh, case, which we don't want that to happen. Um, so that's what we're going to stick with. Now, let me make, make another remark about the definition uh, and the notation in particular. Now, when we say that A divides B, which is this notation, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that is a statement about two integers. So a statement could be either true or false, a mathematical statement. Never confuse this with the fraction B over A. So that's why when you allowed A to be 0, this is OK here, but it's not OK over here for this fraction. Why? Because they're not the same. One is in a statement, the other one is a fraction. So a over b, a div divides b is in a statement, which could be true or false. And b over a is just a number, which in this case is a rational number. Um, so I wanted to say that I know man, a lot of books will have a not equal to 0. And that's what we're going to use just because we want, don't want to uh, deal with that uh, trivial case. Now, um, I made this video only about the definition of divisibility uh, uh, because, well, I think it's important to look at it in a more detailed way. Now, we're going to use the definition of divisibility in the next video to talk about some uh, properties of divisibility. So, uh, some general properties, for example, when you have certain divisibility, what will that imply? And also, how do you check in certain cases that a number is divisible by another using uh, not uh, a calculator or a computer to do a fast computation, but rather using a concept to do it a little bit faster. So what I mean by that is do it in a more uh, elegant way, if you want to call it like that. So I think that's all I have to say for this video about the definition of divisibility. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.